Games in this podcast range from E to M. Hello, and welcome to the official Xbox podcast, the only podcast coming to you from inside the walls here at Xbox, coming to you on YouTube and all kinds of Spotify, podcasts, any place you listen to a podcast. I personally listen to Spotify. It's good. Same. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's great. <laughs> We've got a full crew of dark jeans wearing people it's today. True. I didn't even notice that. We did yeah. not coordinate yeah. this. Yeah, uh, black jeans or infrared uh, shoes uh, get you in the door. In terms of just show up here and we'll, we'll let you in. Uh, uh, Tina, it's really great to see you. You've had a quite a, a, a busy week, haven't you? I, I have been busy. I was going to make the joke of when you were like, oh, there's a big show. I was like, what? But then you ruined my joke. Oh well, that's we what I do. The podcast. Yeah, all right. We'll just we'll just dial it back. So you produced <laughs> uh, the partner preview this week, right? Yes, this was the second ever partner preview. So super exciting. Um, I saw a few people. So we are recording this before the show has actually gone live. So I have no idea what people are going to think. But you don't I do even know, know what's in it. I don't even know what's in it. What did I produce? There we go. I got my joke in. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, I did see people reacting to the announcement, and I was really thrilled to. Um, get the impression that people are excited that they weren't expecting one so soon. But that was definitely my goal. There's so many games out there. We talk about them every week on this podcast. So why not have like a little bit more of a momentous occasion? Not that podcasts aren't momentous, but a little more flair. It depends on the podcast. It depends yes. on the podcast. It depends on <laughs> the week and where we're at. Exactly, the exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just such a good opportunity to, you know, shine a light on how many amazing third-party partners we work with and how many amazing games are out there that we get to kind of curate for the show to figure an experience that everyone can kind of find something that they like out of the lineup. And even a few things that you can play right now, but we're going to yes. deep dive into those as this show proceeds. Mm. First of all, let's head on over here to the cheese couch. Ethan Rothhammel, this yeah. is the first time we've been on the show together. It is. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if we've ever been on a show together now that I think about it. Maybe, no, I've been maybe? avoiding you pretty successfully yeah, for the yeah. last it's like, decade yeah. or so. Yeah, as soon as Malik's gone, it's like there's no barrier between us. So I mean, true. we almost thought you guys were the same person. You never showed up in <laughs> yeah. the same space. Uh, the he same has glasses. It's true. And, 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 Exclusive. So that's the Kent. soup. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Holy crap. Wow. Yeah, good to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, great to be on the show. Um, I think I, my first time on was maybe two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. So no, it, it was didn't, a good show. didn't bore everyone enough. I guess they decided to have me back. I, I liked know. it. Yeah. You were great. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. But so, uh, that's sweet. It's good to have a familiar face here. Uh, Hi. Kelly Lombardi. How yeah. are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, thank you for having me during... Um, Xbox podcast emo week. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It was great to have uh, an excuse to break out the black skinny jeans again. But yeah, happy to be here. We're setting the clocks forward this weekend. So I feel like we're going to come out of the, the big dark, as they call it, yes. up yeah. here in Seattle. Yeah. This is the, the last week weekend. I get to be emo and then I yeah. have to move on. I'm ready yes. though. It's we been a real downer. Weather. This weather yeah. has been tough, so I'm ready to move on. Cherry Blossoms mm -hmm. are already coming out. <sighs> Yeah. Yes. Uh, we'll come back. The weather segment is actually yeah. later. We do weather ah. on the ones here. Okay. So, <laughs> Good to know. Kelly, Good to know. Uh, how, how, you've been coping. We were talking about yeah. this, uh, you know, this time of year, sometimes it's sort of like, uh, and you found a great game on Game Pass that has been sort of helping you mm -hmm. through, you know, bring a little order to the chaos of life. Yeah, I think I had said... Um, since my life is in shambles, uh, all I can really wrap I didn't my head want to around. I not say that, but you can say it. <laughs> it's relatable. Um, but no, I have been playing on, uh, a little to the left on Game Pass. And it's basically just a game where you take things and put them places. And everything <laughs> makes like very satisfying sounds. And like when everything lines up, like it's just, it brings order to the chaos in mm. my life. And it is just so much fun to play through. And then... They also have a DLC that you can buy. Called Which has like the cutest name, right? Cupboards and Drawers. Oh, that is cute. <laughs> and, um, Thank you, dear audience. Yeah. <laughs> Highly recommend checking it out. Uh, it's not a super long game, but it's really fun to play. And um, if you like just, you know, putting things places and seeing things line up. And some of the puzzles have more than one way to solve them. Oh, cool. So you might like color code something and then you see that there's actually two additional ways to organize them and it kind of makes you change your thinking a little bit of like oh my instinct was to do this but there's other ways that you could look at it where like the labels line up or you know um I don't know I don't want to spoil no spoilers <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers for the, the organizing pencil did it. it was the green pencil it's totally true though because even uh, with like records or movies mm -hmm. when people used to actually collect physical copies of mm -hmm. this thing yeah. like what uh, was your organization you do method do you mm -hmm. go alphabetically do you go by director do you go by genre or do you go by like 
Yeah, oh or do you know, yeah. like the, the color coding of the spine that you see yep. visually? Like yeah. everyone's got a different tactic. You guys are dorks. This is the game <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how's right. the music though? How's the music? Is it pretty oh, good? Oh, it's so relaxing. Yeah. It's yeah. like a little like tinkly kind of like doo 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 doo. Nice. It's nothing like that, <laughs> okay. but um, no, because I don't want to spoil it. Gosh, yeah, okay, stop okay. Sorry, my pressuring bad, my bad, my bad. me. Kelly actually produced and recorded the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's just me going boop 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 doo 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 doo. So zen. So zen. Um, hire me if for all your voice acting needs. Pretty good. Yeah. That's music I can sort a pencil to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, highly recommend. So Tina, check it out when you're done playing Like a Dragon. Oh, it's gonna take me a minute. You're I the know. Host now. Did you nice. like that? Yeah, <laughs> test it out. And we've talked we've talked about Like a Dragon a bit, so I'm not as far as you finished it at this I point. I did shortly. 84 okay. hours. Yeah. Wow. So I think yeah. I probably have another 80 left. No, I think I'm about like <laughs> wow. maybe 10 hours in. I'm on chapter five. Um, so my understanding is it's it's very much opening up to me at this point, mm -hmm. um, which I'm very appreciative of because I just any amount of time spent in this world and 70, 60 more hours of it, I am very prepared for. I should Love say, it. don't let my like hour count intimidate you. Oh, I'm doing I wanted every to every side quest. Okay, then right, it'll take you that long. Then. <laughs> yeah, uh, you you could. Uh, blow through the game in half that time, but I yeah. really wanted to see everything, and I wanted Same. to explore all the jobs. There's some mm. really fun jobs out there. I even went and got some of the DLC ones, turning Ichiban into a linebacker, Amazing. and you're doing, and like one of his ults is like marching through the the, the field with uh, you know the cheerleader group at halftime, and they're like you know doing high kicks and like <laughs> whacking these gangsters. It's so goofy, it's so ridiculous. The amount of like animations and costumes and just obviously like you know the actual skill set that you get alongside every job like mm -hmm. there's just so much put into it and it's so enjoyable. I'm currently I just swapped to Action Star. So I've got this like, you know, yellow, bright yellow Kill Bill style, Bruce Lee style like jumpsuit um kind of a get up. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's Using just, the nunch nunchucks. Yeah, the nunchucks as well. And it's, just, it's so fun to experiment with, but it's also useful because sometimes in some games I get wary of, do I want to respec in this way? Mm -hmm. But with infinite wealth, um, you actually, and with the series in general, you actually are stronger or the more that you put into more jobs under each character. Exactly. So everything you do is, is very use useful, very yep. worth your time. And then you can bring the best skills from one job yes. over to another one. So exactly. it, like you said. And experimental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right to be a jack of all trades in, in that game. <laughs> uh, Ethan, I saw you're on my friends list mm -hmm. and I saw you playing a game that a lot of people are talking about, yeah. but I don't know how it works. Bellatro. <laughs> Bellatro. And I think that's how you yeah. pronounce it. Um, super addicting. And I will say, like, when I booted it up, I also was kind of like, what is this game? And I, I'm a fan of card games in general, deck building games. And I like I like poker especially. So it was kind of like, you know, this this really called to me. And it, what it feels like is it almost feels like you're playing poker uh, with the ability to, I want to say, like, cheat because you get these joker cards that have abilities in them and it behaves much like a roguelite where it's like you it's like how far in your run can you get and you're basically just making poker hands it's all poker um, hands and uh, like terminology but there's no like concept of betting so it's basically like imagine the person you're going up against is like a boss and you're trying to beat their blind which is like a set number of chips and so you're basically trying to combo your way up by like making these poker hands with the help of the jokers that you find uh, and, and just getting like the highest scoring hand. So it's it's hard to explain, but everyone I know that, have that has jumped in, like within 15 minutes, they're like, oh, this is gonna take over my life. And it is, it's just, it's like one more game. It's like any other roguelite where you're just like, I could do this again, one more run, I got time. And uh, it's it's just completely taken over my life, especially now that you have, you know, touch controls on remote play, like I can play it on my phone. Um, I can lay on the couch and just like grind it for hours. Uh, very, very much recommend. I think it's 15 bucks. So this is totally an idea at Xbox game. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, it, it just seems like a lot of people are streaming it. So yeah. it, 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 I still, I'm not exactly sure what it is. Literally, <laughs> and I don't know that I can explain it to you. Like it, it, it's so, like even when I was playing the tutorial, I was like, am I doing this right? But then within a couple hands, you like figure it out. Highly recommend folks go watch it. If it's interesting to you, it is like some, it's so, it's just so hard to explain, but it is basically like poker meets roguelike meets deck building. It's, it's so fun. <laughs> poker with a twist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a great way to look at it. And, and no, no betting whatsoever. Just, just beating bosses. It's kind of nice. Yeah. I read that the developer like doesn't gamble. And so no it's, this is not another like 
Texas Hold'em game. No, this is, no, 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 yeah, no. So the yeah. cards might look familiar. It's, like, it's like more comparable to like a Slay the Spire or something where you're like trying okay. to beat a harder and harder challenge. Okay. And there's like curveballs they throw at you where like maybe you can't use diamonds this this play, this oh, like this okay. hand, right? All like right. maybe maybe face cards are worth twice as much, you know? And it's it's kind of just I don't know how the guys came up with it because it really is a creative game. Yeah. It reminds me of like when you would play like a card game at like camp or something. Yeah. And one person was in charge of making up all the rules the and they'd be like yeah, you can't use jacks this time. Yeah. And you'd be like, okay, <laughs> yeah, Samantha. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It sure. feels like that. It kind of feels like that. But it sounds fun. Yeah. I feel like all the card games in my camp just involve slapping each other. Like, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Is, okay. that, is that a thing? Like mm-hmm. Butterfinger, Slap I think, was one. It was something. Was if like you weren't fast spoons. enough, you were getting slapped. Yeah, mm-hmm. for yeah. sure. Maybe it was a Philly thing. I don't know. <laughs> Very okay. simple, like one-to-one <laughs> one mechanics. Yeah. <laughs> so you were playing something else that just uh, that was sort of a surprise drop for folks on Game Pass. Yeah, just, yeah, exactly. Uh, my my wife and I this weekend got super into Dead Island 2. We were kind of just looking for a new co-op game. We're both big RPG players, and we actually have an upcoming vacation to California. So we're like, oh, let's check out the digs. Let's see, let's see how, <laughs> how LA does in a zombie apocalypse and see if it's comparable to what our vacation will be like. Mm-hmm. Um, and and we got totally sucked in. I mean, that game, it's it's like the perfect Game Pass game because it's just hours of content, up to four of your friends multiple characters that are all fully voiced and have different builds like tanks versus dps versus support so you can replay um the dialogue is is funny and cheesy at times but really entertaining uh the cutscenes, the boss fights they're all like tied to some great musical compositions and some like legitimate songs that that just make it fun like it's it's probably one of the most fun zombie games i've played in a while and i mean that by like drop kicking zombies the the variety at which you can slaughter these guys i've been playing a lot of cozy games we just talked about the seattle <laughs> yeah. this is like the polar opposite of that it is gruesome so be prepared for that like every time you hit a zombie if you hit them with a bat in the jaw you're going to break their jaw like their arms are going to go limp when you break their arms like it is visceral uh but very funny and very entertaining yeah yeah, you know, broken jaws. Yeah, so <laughs> you so laugh so hard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We'll be talking about a lot more uh, Game Pass games, including those that were just announced this week that are coming out uh, over the course of March. There's some really good ones coming down the line. We're also, our good friend Malik is uh, speaking with the WWE 2K24 team, I yeah. want to say. So uh, that's coming up in a little bit. But the big news this week, of course, has been the uh, partner preview. So where do we want to start? There was uh, some games... There's one specifically that I was really excited to learn. What is this game? And that mm-hmm. was uh, Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess. What can you tell me? Yes, yeah, so that was really exciting because we debuted their reveal trailer last year at the June Showcase and then got a really much deeper dive into what the actual mechanics look like. Because I think you got a really good understanding of, wow, this looks gorgeous and it looks like there's some like interesting combat elements, but how does that actually play out? What are some of the other mechanics around the game? And ultimately, we got to see at the partner preview the concept of the day-night cycle and how that works out into the combat at the end of the day. So you're sort of rescuing these villagers, you know, bringing them as part of your party and um, assigning them different roles, Mm -hmm. building out these structures and preparing in the day for the nighttime, like big boss level um, style enemy battles. So it was really fun to be able to debut like, hey, this is what this game is in in more of a fully fleshed out way. Um, I believe Capcom is going to be diving in even deeper um, if this is going live on Thursday, if this is a Thursday, then their show is actually later today at, at 3 p.m. PT time if you're on the West Coast like we are. Um, so we'll hopefully get to see even more about how all those systems kind of intertwine and maybe a little more context on what we got to see. We, we also have a blog post on Xbox Wire, yes. that's news.xbox.com, where Capcom explained it. And it was like, in terms of just like the quick, like, what is this game? It's It's got in those those periods of time at night where you're actually fighting off these evil spirits or demons. Uh, it's both a combination of action and real-time strategy. So you're in there actually doing this sort of like dancing martial art, mm-hmm. but then also directing those villagers. And you can even reassign them using these masks. Mm-hmm. What are their different roles going to be? So it seems like it has a very interesting look to it. Mm-hmm. We were talking before the show, like just sort of the aesthetics almost reminded me of this that part in Elden Ring where you go up on this hill and there's yeah. these, this creepy village of like people dancing. Yeah, and, and, and dancing. it just was. <laughs> I did not like that area. No. It very much disconcerted me. Who this did? looks much more colorful, but there was just like sort of like there's a lot of like mystery here, and 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 I'm really eager to learn more. So, like you said, Capcom highlights they're, they're doing a multi day stream, but the the day one is uh, today, March seventh. 3 p.m. Pacific time, so you can head on over 
uh, to, I guess, Capcom, you head over to their social channels. I'm sure it'll be on Twitch and YouTube as well. And you can find out about that. Do you have a favorite game coming out of this uh, partner preview? Anything you all want to talk about? You want to go first, Kim? No, you can go first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, um, you know, they obviously didn't see a ton of it, but Sleight of Hand looks really cool. I mean, I loved, they, I believe they called it like a stealth game of like hard-boiled espionage action, mm -hmm. which is just like, what a cool tag, you know? I loved the cool, the, like the cool maybe main character kind of smoking. She's like a witch. She throws out the cards and then she's, you know, using abilities with her cards. Like just the, I'm already bought into the world. You know, I want to know where this takes place. I want to understand the setting. I want to know what kind of game this is. Like, is it deck building? Was we, you know, we talked about, I'm a little bit of a fan of, uh, or what, you know, it seems like there's more to this game than that we're going to see down the road. So definitely really excited for it. The art style alone has got me hyped. Very much so. It's a, it's a very unique aesthetic. Yeah. Um, but also one of our new game reveals for the show. So I'm glad that that stuck out to you and and that there's there seems to be like little inklings of what's going on. Because yes. it's the fun of brand new trailers for brand new games of like, what exactly is this? And totally. Who's the protagonist and what are the mechanics and what's the setting and what's my motivation and stuff. Yeah. So I'm sure we'll see in the future. Yeah, I love it. All love right, it. Kelly, now you're up. I know you you were into Tales of uh, Kinzara Zell. Yes. Um, that one definitely got me the Tales of Kinzara. Like, uh, I saw it and I was watching the trailer and I was just so drawn to the aesthetic of it and the style. And then I think, I forget the exact phrase that was used, but it was something about um, needing precision and patience. And I was like, <laughs> literally laughed out loud to myself. I was like, oh, that's not my strong suit, <laughs> but I will be playing this anyway and yeah. be very be very bad at it. And I'm going to enjoy every second of it. So um, I think it's a beautiful game and I'm very excited to check it out. And I'm also very excited for um, the Creatures of Ava. Oh, um, yeah. That one also looked right up my alley with um, kind of befriending Cozy. different creatures. Yeah. And um, The flute was delightful in yeah. that trailer. Love that. Uh, get me get me some flute and some creatures and I'm... Uh, some belly rubs? I'm sold. Yeah. Did like, you like uh, the belly What more could you ask <laughs> yeah. for in a game? Um, but yeah, I think that's one that I'm excited to like learn more about where... Um, just kudos to you and the team because I think that there was such a great mix of here's a game, here's everything about it, and then here's just like a little taste and you can learn more down the road. And I think that it was just really well done. There are games that I'm like, oh, I'm going to play that like right now. And then games that I'm like, I'm going to remember this yeah, for later yeah. because like um, definitely piquing my interest. So I fantastic. really appreciate that because we, tr we try to think about a balance of, because we have a core like group of people who work on the show and mm -hmm. we think about from each of our personal perspectives, we're like, I'm personally really excited about this show and if it does not make it into, <laughs> or about this game and if it doesn't make it into the show, then I'm quitting immediately. <laughs> it's never that intense. You're still but, here, so that's yes, yeah. exactly. So all my favorites made it in, obviously. No, but it's, um, <laughs> it's so interesting to talk to people with different perspectives because that's a reflection of our audience too and we want to make sure mm -hmm. the cozy games are in there totally. like the shooty shooty games are in there like things that strike at, at different types of people's core mm -hmm. and it helps with pacing of the show too. totally you know yeah. we like mm -hmm. to kind of tell you a story ultimately you yeah. know through the the pacing and the and the, how we kind of think about the structure of the show and the format of from these one game to the other i love the format of these they really are incredible and we're not tooting our own horns because we're not on that team. i mean maybe a little bit but that's maybe, okay. a little, <laughs> maybe a little but i do like it. it it is just like an awesome flow like you said it's it's great it's intense games to casual to and you get like a little bit of everything and it's just back to back to back like it's so yeah. hype. i love it i mean to your point as someone i did nothing for the show other than watch it and so i got to just see it as a fan and i had no like deep emotional connections like I do with some of the stuff that gets produced. Absolutely, yeah. But I just watched it and I was just like, just fangirling a little bit as I went through. I'm so so just well done. Yeah. yeah. Quick you. note about Tales of Kenzara yes. and, and, me, and me fangirling actually is, uh, so <laughs> yeah. uh, this is, uh, as I'm sure you know, uh, there are many great uh, video game podcasts out there, a number of great Xbox podcasts. Yeah. And we usually go up around noon Pacific on Thursdays. Usually first thing in the morning, I end up listening to the Kind of Funny X-Cast and uh, the creator, the ex executive producer of Tales of Kenzara Zao. You've seen in a lot of different places, Abu Bakar Salam is actually on this episode of uh, Kind of Funny X-Cast. So as soon as you're done here, go over there. I can listen to him talk all day. Oh, seriously. And, uh, Incredible. He narrated the yeah. asset, too. Like, you have a little bit of dialogue from the characters to, to set up some of that, you know, emotional storytelling that he talked about when he introduced the game mm -hmm. at the Game Awards. But he actually narrates 
um, what some of the new features that you're diving into in, in the partner preview cool. too. Cool. And he's got a pretty extensive really uh, both acting career and yes. voice acting career. And we we'll have to talk to him at some point. You don't often see someone go from you know that sort of the, the talent, if you will, mm -hmm. into like leading the development of a game. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and he's been incredible. so hands on. He's done yeah. so many appearances. Showed up at the game awards. Yep. Like yeah, just yeah. clearly like a real drive and passion for the for his own game, of course. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. This is now an Abu Bakr uh, uh, <laughs> song yeah. fan cast. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> appreciation podcast. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, so you, since you were working on this, you know, for months, um, what are some of the games that you want to make sure people really notice, Ooh. Tina? Um, there was a bunch of stuff, actually. We we had um, a shadow drop, which uh, if anyone noticed the, the very cheesy, hopefully not so cheesy, uh, little shadow drop badge we added in, too, to add extra flair for the Stalker trilogy. Mm -hmm. The original yes. Stalker trilogy that was on PC is on console for the first time. So that was, a, you know, available today. So we, we definitely tried to add in some surprises as well as some deeper dives. So first Berserker Kazan like got a little bit more of a deep dive into um, it's very unique like anime kind of style mm -hmm. but also combat. So people have seen some clips of that game but we wanted to dive in a little bit deeper. Um, we had a couple release date announcements which was fun. So Frostpunk 2 and Final Fantasy 14 kind of confirming on that front. Uh, and then I was really like intrigued uh, personally by Unknown 9 Awakening because yeah. We had also known about that game's existence, but didn't quite know what the gameplay mechanics were there. And um, as a protagonist, you can kind of like take on your enemy's bodies and shoot their friends with their friend and <laughs> yeah. then jump into the next one. And it was just very cool seeing that play out in the different environments and kind of overlaid with some of the narration so you can get a sense of what the story is too. So just jam-packed with a lot of like very different kind of games. And I was also really excited to get Roblox into the show yes. in the form mm -hmm. of like a grief fill cross Chucky, um, like <laughs> in-game uh, expansion experience. And it was just so fun having an asset with Chucky in there. I, You're such a horror this fan. Is, yes. And I also, and this may be bad to say, but I grew up with Chucky. So there's like a nostalgia <laughs> element to it That explains the email well. yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah so much, at least yeah. for today. Um, but it was just very fun to like, you know, see him jumping on the characters' backs and just kind of flailing around with, with, the, with his knife. <laughs> and the Chucky like laughter, we had to Ugh. definitely make sure that was played up. So it was, just, it was really yeah, cool to see that in the Ooh. show. Yeah. I was not allowed to watch Chucky growing up. Um, <laughs> really? I probably yeah. was not technically either, but somehow, you know. Oh, <laughs> yeah, those yeah. things always like kind of sneak through and then it haunts you forever. Forever. So, yes. Yeah. Your fear unlocked. Uh, so a game that I've been playing just a ton of yeah. uh, is Persona 3 Reload. This is my this is my treadmill game right now mm. because mm. I, like the day goes by and I'm like I have not left the house today, so let me just like hop on the <laughs> treadmill and like watch something or, or play something. And and Persona 3 Reload has been that game. It's so good, and so I was super excited to see that uh, there's a lot more coming. And so there's an expansion pass that was revealed here during this uh, partner preview, and. There's new outfits, there's new background music. Music, by the way, is just phenomenal in this game across the board. When you're playing a game for 80, 90 hours and you still love the music all the way through, there's like there's a certain skill to, to that. But the most important part is uh, there's a episode Igis. Mm -hmm. Igis is a character who is like a um, essentially a robot, but there's more to it than that. And um, and there's multiple versions we've talked about in the past of Persona 3. There's Persona 3, the original version, then there's Persona 3 um, Portable, and there was Persona 3 FES. And this brings in that expanded section called uh, The Answer Episode I Guess from FES, which has not been available for a very long time, and brings it into Reload, which looks beautiful. It's an additional, it's dozens more hours, and it takes place sort of in, in the end game. So if you're enjoying the game now, continue to enjoy the game. And then come, I think it's uh, several months down the line, when this comes out, you'll have a lot more to come back to. And the great part is, is this will be redeemable through Game Pass. So if you're a Game Pass Ultimate member, um, there's basically, you, you uh, unlock a perk and you, you can get this expansion pass that gets you some things now, some things later. So if you've been enjoying the game, and of course the entire game's on Game Pass, please, please download it, please play it. You For me, it. it'll make me happy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I saw that trailer pop up, I went, ooh, Jeff's going to be excited. <laughs> so you are like so closely tied, yeah, <laughs> to Persona 3 for yes, me. Yes, yeah. you're not wrong. And when I found out, I would have bought it anyway, but when I found out I was in Game Pass, I was like, okay. I'll, I'll Even easier. Ready. Yes. Um, we had talked about uh, a Capcom stream that is going yes. on later today at 3 p.m., but even earlier that than that at 2 p.m., 
We've talked a little bit about Towerborn over the course of the last year or so. I got to play it at Gamescom. It was really fun. Uh, but there's actually a stream where you're going to learn more about it uh, at 2 p.m. today. So you're going to join Stoic Studio. They're kicking off a broadcast with a casual conversation, diving into the game design of Towerborn, including its unique and beautiful art direction and uh, just stories from game development. Uh, so the stream's going to be hosted by the community strategist named Rybot01, uh, digging into the origins of Towerborn and uh, the transition uh, from the Banner Saga trilogy, which was a great tactical RPG series, which yes. is very, very different from uh, what Towerborn is. So <laughs> I'm really curious, like, you know, the, the development and the changes uh, that they've made and the things they've learned and what they're going to be bringing into Towerborn uh, when some we play that. There might be some artistic influence. May, it just kind of seems that way like yeah. when I watch them both. you know. And I, I was such a big fan of the Banner Saga, so I'm, I'm so hyped. I know we, we played a lot of Gamescom. We talked yeah. about it yeah. ad nauseum, I would say. A lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a very grim game, whereas like Towerborn seems like very <laughs> yeah. like light and, and airy, and I think that's going to be really fun. Mm -hmm. And just because we're sort of talking about the Banner Saga a little bit, I just want to make a shout-out for a game that is coming out uh, tomorrow, actually, and that is Unicorn Overlord. I talked about it a little bit oh, last yeah. week. I've gotten to play another probably 10 hours uh, of the, the the full game, and let me tell you, this one's holding up. This is a really, really good game. Uh, the folks at Atlas and, uh, and Sega have been just throwing RPG after RPG at us this year, and... Um, I'm here for it. Like I, it is a phenomenal game. It's a mix of sort of Fire Emblem and Final Fantasy XII and Tactics or oh, Over wow. Battle sixty four. And and it's the first game from Vanillaware that's ever been out on Xbox. So if you love these types of games, you like uh, RPGs, you like Japanese games, you like strategy games, uh, you should support this game. So I'll just I'll leave it at that. There's a demo. Try it out. If you like what you're playing in the demo, all your progress carries over to the full game. So. That's how they should do it. That's stacked stacked I mean, weeks. sold, yeah. especially with that last line. Yeah. I love a demo mm -hmm. carrying over into and, my full game. And yeah, it's a nice, nice meaty demo. So you will know by the end of the demo whether you want, mm -hmm. want to keep playing it, and you're going to want to keep playing it. I can just <laughs> tell you that from experience. Um, throughout March, Xbox is celebrating Women's History Month and the contributions that women have made to gaming. Um, one of the main things that we have going on is Microsoft Rewards. A lot of different ways to get Microsoft Rewards points, but you can earn and donate those points to a few different organizations that are supporting women with Xbox. And the organizations that will be featured this month are Women in Games International. They work to cultivate resources to normalize diversity in the games industry through increased representation and um, things like that. And then the second one is the National Center for Transgender Equality. So they advocate to uh, change policies in society to increase understanding and acceptance of transgender people. Mm. Um, so go ahead and you know, use your points, donate uh, just for play good games cause. and you earn them. Just, yeah, yeah, just like it's literally great. game and um, search for things on yeah. Bing and it's just great. Yeah. Yeah. Gaming for good. Yeah. yeah. Right. Another thing that we'll be doing is there will be a women's community games collection as part of the Xbox store. Uh, it'll feature women in powerful lead roles in games, um, teams that have women that have built games, things nice. like that. And it's actually going to exist year round as part of our ongoing work to create more inclusive gaming ecosystems and elevate content that resonates with communities. So make sure you check that out. And last but not least, log into Halo. Yes. Halo <laughs> celebrating women as well in a very cool way. Um, by logging into Halo Infinite this month, you'll unlock the Women's History Month armor coding visor and emblem suite all based off rosie the riveter so that yeah iconic mm -hmm. poster um make sure that you check that out all really great stuff happening they did a really good job with that one yeah. other game i want to call out because uh actually right before we went live i saw that they uh they posted this the mlb the show team for uh 24 in their road to the show which is sort of like their almost like baseball RPG that they have and is probably the most popular mode. Uh, for the first time, you can play uh, as women athletes in uh, MLB The Show, which is nice. really cool. So uh, great to see the work they put into it. That team, I mean, it's the best baseball game there is. So um, That's awesome. you can come at me on that one. And in fact, <laughs> it was uh, just confirming again, that game is coming to Game Pass, which is awesome. It's a day one Game Pass game. And that'll be coming out uh, on March 19th. It's almost baseball season. I swear we're coming out of the winter. We're not going to be all wearing black it's in so like soon. a month from now. We're going to be, we're, gonna, we're, we're all going to be it. dressed like Ethan's shoes yes. in, in just a couple of weeks. Oh, I, I can't swear. wait to get a tan, you guys. Oh my gosh, Hawaiian week. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I don't tan. Uh, this is it. <laughs> this is as good as it gets. This is what you get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or I go straight to red. But uh, so let's talk about uh, Game Pass because there's so much to play and a bunch more games that were just announced. So uh, first of all, Warhammer 40k Bolt Con. Uh, they call this one uh, Boomer Shooters. I feel like like very, like, oh. like like pixelated a Boomer uh, Shooter. That's good. Yeah, it's a thing. I can't, I can't take full credit for it. It's a thing. Yeah. So um, he plays a Space Marine. It's a very 90s. And I mean, if you play like OG Doom, which is also in Game Pass, uh, you kind of know what to expect. Sort of more modern, of course. Right. But uh, anyway, Bolt Gun. So we're checking universe. out. <clears throat> Cool. And then, and then um, you can't play that with the with the kids in the room. But that's what Paw Patrol World is for. Um, these games, uh, I, you know, my, I I've missed Paw Patrol, but I've got friends with young kids, and let me tell you, that is an empire. Like that oh, is <laughs> like it is on a on a level that I cannot comprehend. <laughs> it, it, it is up there, and uh, like like you already know. You don't need me to tell you if you've got if you've got a, a child of a certain age. Uh, go ahead and just download this, and you're all set for quite some time. What a drastic difference in games, too, between Warhammer and Paw Patrol. Paw, Paw Patrol for them, yeah. and, and yeah, Warhammer, for Warhammer for you. Is, <laughs> yeah. is the way Evening game, it. date, you know. Yeah, exactly. Game. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And then we announced uh, a bunch of new games that are going to be coming out. Uh, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Ooh. Rehydrated uh, is coming out on March 12th. Did you see the, the SpongeBob <laughs> Xbox that we oh, announced yeah. this week? Yes. <laughs> Super limited version. Do you know about this? Oh, yeah. I bet you know, you, I mean, like, are you like, Close to I this? did not. No, I did not work on this one no, at you all. You didn't no. hand paint each. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Sad, tragically, there's just too much hardware going through those doors. It, but it is sweet. When yeah. we when we designed, and when I say we, I mean not anybody in this room. The Series <laughs> yeah. X, like I don't think we realized like quite how many things it would like perfectly mm-hmm. lend itself to. I mean, a fridge, obviously. obviously. I do have a mini yeah. fridge at home, but it works perfectly for SpongeBob. SpongeBob is another mm-hmm. obvious yeah. choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, the memes write right themselves, yeah. truly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it'll be available only on Best Buy. We've never yeah. made. Usually when we make these special edition Series X's or Series S's, um, I think we, you know, well, that's that's a normal one. It's special too. But uh, <laughs> they've usually been a way for giveaway. And yeah. we've never mm-hmm. put any of these for sale. It's a very limited amount. But yeah, um, I, don't I don't know. It'd be cool to see if we're going to continue doing yeah. that or not. Yeah, I love it. I love it, honestly. Exactly. All right. All right. You know what I loved? I love <laughs> control. Not like the idea of having control in my life. This is, this is, you love this, that. This is a bit of a train wreck segue, game. but we're going to go with it. But Control the Game, made by Remedy. Uh, that was my favorite game of 2019. Oh, it was. Say. I, yeah. I agree they're both wrong, and I'm finding If I'm as wrong as you, Tina, that's right it, enough it for me. I'll fact right, check though. it right now. Yeah. That, that was my favorite game of that year. Yeah, me too. Absolutely phenomenal game. And Ultimate Edition is coming out on Game House March 13th. That is really soon nice. on Cloud Console and PC. If you haven't played this game or if you played Alan Wake 2 and you want to know like more, more about that lore. world, yeah. uh, this is a must-play game. Like, so much I, I, crossover and like actual like threads of the story, not just the mm-hmm. universe. Ah, so they're the in the same world. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, there's an Alan Wake expansion that was actually mm-hmm. part of it. I believe that. Oh, I remember. Control I remember. DLC I I that, that also like threads the gaps yes. between them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very intricate in. storytelling. Can you play Control as a standalone? Yes. Asking for a friend that hasn't played any of the Alan Wake games. Mm. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yes. Yeah. It is okay. kind of its. Own, it's definitely its own contained story, but yeah. there are implications mm-hmm. as to how. I, mean, I like you know, when games won't spoil do that. it because yes, exactly, and they are master mystery storytellers at yeah. Remedy, so mm. it's just the sort of thing where you can absolutely play yeah. Control on its own, and that's another like awesome female lead character too. Yeah. So it's a, a pretty incredible experience. Yeah, oh. less of a horror game, although there's, it's very creepy yeah. at, at a lot of times, but Still it's counts. not so much. Yeah. A lot of voices that I didn't love the, the, that part, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's almost like if you were like running the X Files, but you were the yes. smoking man, I guess. But no smoking, <laughs> which because smoking's bad for you. But uh, really awesome game, and uh, I'm just talking myself into playing through it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's really yeah. Uh, uh-huh. No more heroes three. So this is a long running series by mm-hmm. Suda Fifty One. I want to mm-hmm. say uh, that got to start on the Wii, and mm-hmm. uh, No More Heroes three is coming out on March 14th on cloud console and PC. Have you ever played uh, oh, one of the No yes. More Heroes? Tell me about it because. I only know Travis Touchdown. Yes, Travis Touchdown. He is the center um, of everything. And he kind of goes through these battles with, like, other famous, like, strong, powerful leaders. And I actually, it's been too long. I have to replay now because I've lost the thread of, like, the core story outside of that where he's just sort of battling and going up the ranks. Um, But it's another one of those, like, really goofy 
experiences kind of on the level of like a dead island, like we've been talking about, or, yeah. or infinite well. So it's kind of a palate cleanser in that sense, I would say. Yeah, he's armed with like like a lightsaber-esque mm-hmm. sort of weapon. Yeah, yeah. he like, sh- you know, does like a shake weight to charge it up, essentially. <laughs> like it's got a long running joke <laughs> oh, series so around good. that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one last game announced as part of this uh, March batch of uh, Game Pass games, Lightyear Frontier. Cozy. Uh, it's coming into game preview. Yeah, I, this is a game that uh, we cozy. revealed about a year ago. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Yeah, it looks like co like building or yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah, co-op, co-op, building a farm in space. I mean, what more could you want? It looks, it looks wholesome. It looks cozy. It looks like a lot of fun if you're into farming games or just something that's like. More chill. I've been playing a lot of like farming sims lately, like Stardew Valley, not Paleo. Heard of this. Oh, you should check it out. Yeah. They might as well call it Kelly's Lightyear Frontier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for that. That'll be the I uh, the extended DLC. version. Yeah. There's still a game yeah. preview. Yeah. They, I think they're still open to taking feedback. The Kelly edition. Okay, I'll write them a letter. Um, I'll let them know <laughs> my thoughts. All right. Oh, uh, so, so many games. Couple, yeah, and mm-hmm. a few others that are out now. You've played Outlast Trials before. Oh haven't you? yes. I mean, if you had like. If Outlast Trials is on your, if you've played Outlast, you have an idea of what this game is like. And Tina, I know again, you like horror. I I love horror. I'm a big fan, but I'm also like a, a total baby. Like I I won't I won't watch horror games alone or play horror games alone. I won't watch horror movies alone. I literally have my like I'll have my wife sit down with me to play Resident Evil Four because I love it so much. She's but I'm a too saint. scared. <laughs> yeah, she is. What a wonderful. I love you, honey. Um, but. This is like a great game for those kind of people. If you're like me, where you like the horror experience, but you need a friend and you need a buddy, and it's 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 four player co op. You're running through tri- trials and tests uh, in the Outlast universe. I don't want to spoil the story too much uh, because it kind of kicks you off right into it as to why you're there, why you're in this facility with other people. Very creepy. Uh, it does not lose any of its horror elements uh, in a co op setting, which is great. And there's even like a <laughs> There's like a social hub. Like if you played a Destiny or a game with like a, a tower or something where people hang out, Outlast has a social hub where you get to decorate your room in like the insane asylum, <laughs> and you can see everyone running around in their sadistic outfits. It is it is so weird. I love it. Is give Outlast Trials a shot if you're if you like that genre at all. Very scary. All right. You've oh. talked me into maybe. Get a bug. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's available now. Yeah. And uh, last but not least, WWE 2K24 launched this week. And our own uh, resident expert, wrestling expert, that's right. Malik Prince. Yeah, he's going to WrestleMania. I like, know. It's like, I'd say hi to my mom. It's going back <laughs> to Philly this year. This guy. I know. I was like, can I come with? And he's like, maybe. <laughs> uh, so he spoke with Brian Williams and Lionel Jinks, uh, hyping us up for the launch of this high-profile pro- wrestling game. Before we go to them, though, I just want to remind you, we'll be coming back with some really cool new controllers. So Ooh, you want to stick around for that, but Malik, uh, take us into the ring. What's going on, everybody? Malik here. Now, we're about to talk about the EST of professional game releases, because they're always on top. But now it's time for them to finish their story. As WWE 2K24 releases tomorrow, March 8th, here to talk all about it is Lionel Jinx, who's the creative director of the WWE 2K series, and Brian Williams, who's the gameplay producer of the game. How's it going, guys? Uh, Doing great. Yeah, man, doing fantastic. This is uh, always an exciting part of the year for us, you know? I mean, Christmas. Christmas in March. 100%. A hundred percent. I mean, this is the time that wrestling games game fans like love to see. And, and again, I love the how it's time next to WrestleMania. So I feel like the general WWE hype is there. Um, now the game comes out tomorrow, as I mentioned. Some folks have had their chance to get their hands on it a little bit early, but this must be a really exciting time. Uh, you know, the tagline for the game is finish your story. And I feel like in some ways that kind of applies to the series in general. Can you talk about how exciting of a time this must be? Ah, it's extremely exciting. I think um, when you think about our journey at, at Visual Concepts uh, in, in 2K, you know, from taking this game over, like Brian Williams came over from THQ back in the, the 2K14 trade, you know, so like uh, and and seeing like, you know, the ups and downs of the franchise from then and then the 2K20 uh, release. Uh, I was <laughs> to say what it really was, but, uh, you know, uh, our, our story and journey from that point on has, you know, been nothing short of a miracle, right? When you think about like, you know, working on on this franchise and the history of this franchise and like, just like you said, wrestling games, it, you know, it's synonymous with fun and mayhem and all of these things. And a lot, and for a lot of reasons, um, you know, I think, you know, the fan base has been expecting more, right? Like, you know, ever since we took this over from THQ since 2K14 and wanting us to, you know, put that fun back in. And if you look at everything that we've done since 2K20, 
uh, that's been our mission is to breathe fun, breathe that mayhem. And, you know, we're, we're, we're finishing our story, but the story ain't over. We're going to keep going. Right. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's exciting for us. We can't wait for people to get their hands on it. Cause uh, you know, in, in my opinion, this is the best one we've ever, we've ever done. Yeah. Agreed. And it's funny, you know, you mentioned, you know, it's been 10 years now that uh, from, from the THQ when uh, VC took over the license and, uh, and 2K14 was also themed around WrestleMania. So it's, yeah, it's like, it's, it's very poetic in, in that, in that way. Uh, 10 years ago, we handled WrestleMania fast forward 10, we're doing it again. And yeah, man, it's, that's, that's really exciting. I didn't even think about it that way, but, uh, but like, like pro wrestling, you know, your story's never finished, right? <laughs> that's right. You know, it's, uh, just keeps on going, but yeah, I love what you said there, Lionel, about that. Cause this is, I think we are at a point now where I, I feel that the fan base had envisioned when VC did take over, uh, the franchise and, yeah, I, I I feel the same as you, uh, brother Lanell. Like I, I think this game is fantastic, and I know I'm biased, but I also play these games. I don't just work on them. And I, I mean, I'm not, I have a hell of fun playing this year's game. So I think everybody else will too. I mean, and as players, I think that's what you want are devs who are passionate about the game and who love, especially in this case, love professional wrestling as much as you all do. Now, you all mentioned WrestleMania. Now, we're just a few weeks away from the biggest WrestleMania of all time, WrestleMania 40. And you all had a massive task with this game. It was really about capturing some of those amazing moments from previous WrestleManias and really showcasing them in the showcase. Uh, can you talk about kind of what was the um the decision about what moments to pick it must not been an easy task at all i i think that's one of the hardest things that we we try to do every single year outside of like figuring out the feature list you're like all right showcase and with you know trying to encapsulate 40 years of wrestlemania and look at every single match every single superstar that was involved in that match all the logistics that go into that right you're like is this person available did we do this one already and like you know and and you know, was this match, you know, even though it might have been like, you know, a, a main event, was it, is it worthy of being in a showcase? It, will it be fun to play? Um, and so all of these things that we have to factor in when, when, when thinking about uh, creating a, a, a great showcase list, that this year was no different. And if anything, like you said, it was even harder because you're like, man, how do we not have a showcase without this match? And you're like, well, we don't have the rights to X superstar or that person's in another federation somewhere else or another company. And you're like, all right. And so, um, you know, there's definitely things that we wanted to do that we couldn't just because of the logistics. But you look at the 21 matches that we, you know, we put together and it's hard to argue with any of them. Um, and I know, Brian, you know, you were you know, associated to that 2K14, 30 years of WrestleMania. Um, and we, you know, we look at that list as well. But, you know, um, we did, you know, th there's some in there that you're like, man, we cannot exclude like Hogan Andre, right? Like that's just, when you think of WrestleMania, that's one of the ones that you're like, all right, but there's a few that Brian and those guys did back in 14 that we wanted to do, which you're like, man, all right, we, we, you know, just, there's so many that we could, we wanted to do, but due to time, you know, we have like, I always tell people it takes like nine months. It's like making a baby. You know, it takes nine months to get this game out the door. Um, and we just, you know, we couldn't do it. But uh, again, I'm still happy with what we, we were able to pull off. Yeah, absolutely. And I would just say, you know, it's a, uh, it's a testament to WWE and their story history and just the depth of, of them as a company that even mitigating and, you know, kind of working through, uh, you know, situations where, oh, we don't have the rights to this superstar or this, that, and the other, that, we were still that we were still able to pull together 21 just magnificent matches through the course of 40 years of what they have done mm -hmm. as the leaders in sports entertainment. I think that is just, I mean, honestly, kudos to them. They gave us a lot to work with. And we yeah, sifting through all that is definitely uh, a chore, but a good one, right? Where it's like, you want to do them all, right? You want to do, you make sure every mania is covered. And, you know, uh, I know that Dino, the designer of Showcase, you know, he's very adamant about, about not wanting to, you know, uh, redo a lot of the matches that were in 2K14. But as like no mentioned, I mean, some you just have to, right? I mean, Hogan Andre. <laughs> I mean, but if you ask the lay, the, the lay men, lay person, a WrestleMania memory, whether they watch back then or never watch, they'll probably remember the fact that Andre, you know, Hogan slamming Andre the Giant. So that was a gimme. Uh, I, I watched that one through the the squiggly lines because we didn't have the pay-per-view. It was <laughs> like, you know, like, it wasn't clear. I remember watching it through that. 
Yeah, All and right. I mean, I feel like one of those benefits, and you know, I always talk about these for games like this one that are telling the story from decades ago at this point, there are so many new fans who maybe weren't even alive to experience those moments. And the idea of being able to experience it through something you all create is like, it's, it's got to be a super fulfilling moment. Um, and so I cannot wait to see what's in there. I can't see, wait to see what make the cut made the cut. Uh, I'm sure people are going to be wanting, like you said, for some that didn't make the cut, but you know what? Wrestling fans, they've never been without an opinion. And so I'm sure you all are going to get to hear it, but it's going to be awesome to see what made it. Um, I want to shift gears a little bit to talk about match types because um, I think on top of superstars, what's the showcase? Another one is what's the, what are the new match types in the game? And so I'm, I would love Brian if you could answer. Sure. Like, what are some of the new ones that are coming in? What's your favorite? And maybe a few tips and tricks for those who are jumping in for the first time. Oh yeah, brother, absolutely, man. Uh, so you know, with two K twenty three, you know, we uh, provided fans uh, the long requested, long awaited war games. It was the first time that that match had ever been in the franchise, and the team just hit a home run with it. Um, for a match of that complexity and that that many moving parts, like they really did a phenomenal job. So for 2K24, you know, we upped the ante. I mean, you know, last year, what was it like now? It was uh, even stronger. Uh, you could say this would 24 when it comes to match type is like even hulkier. Because uh, instead of not just one match type, we added four brand new match types. Two that are making their franchise debuts and the ambulance match and the casket match. Uh, two match types, one on one, where the, the objective is to basically put your opponent in the object, whether it's the casket or put him in the back of the ambulance and you know shut the doors on him. Uh, we've also are bringing back a special guest referee, which is you know probably outside, or it might be actually the most fan requested match type uh, going back to maybe like two K fourteen and those generations of, of video games. Um, so that makes a triumphant return with some great new additions. Uh, the gauntlet match. Now that now, everything we've done this year is fantastic. The gauntlet match, you asked my favorite, it's that. I nice. love the gauntlet match because there's three, there's three versions of it. There's a traditional uh, where, you know, one person starts and just, you know, you just keep, you know, trying to win until you get through all, all the other opponents. There's an eliminator style one, which has the multi-person gauntlet. And my favorite, the turmoil, is one superstar against a team that's just out to get them. Uh, and it's up to it's as as little as four superstars and as many as 30. And I love the challenge. And so I, the, the, yeah. the turmoil is probably my favorite new edition uh, this year. Nice. What about you, Lionel? So up until last week, turmoil was my favorite as well. Because like, like, like Brian, I love a challenge. And I would I, I always crank it up to legend difficulty. And I, like, I, right. And I was just like, and so I'm looking for that challenge. And going you know one, you know starting at one trying to last all the way to 30 i still haven't done it and i'm, I'm i just my, like my in my old age i can't do that to my heart and i'm just like no i gotta stop so i've switched over to eliminator it's so much fun because it's like royal rumble but with the chaos of you know extreme rules match because it's like yeah like there's eight people up to eight people in the ring at once and you're just running around so you, it's not throwing anyone over the top rope it's just a free for all. And some people are some someone news coming down the ramp. Someone like you, you'll see some like the AI go and like stop them and like fight them on the stage. And I'm like in the ring and I'm like, it's just like it's so much fun. I'm like, all right, I think that's my new favorite. Oh man, uh, you told me you sold me on that. I'm, <laughs> I think it's, I think it's my, my new favorite too. Uh, but this is what I love, you know. It, we, I, you know, talking about my shirt, it says WWE 2K24, a community day, which which is an event that I attended with y'all, and it was so great to see the community and the passion and discussion like this, where people were talking about, man, this is my favorite part. This is my favorite part. It's almost uniquely WWE because not only is it sports, but it's sports entertainment. It's all about having those, that fun, and there's nothing more entertaining than a casket match or a gauntlet match or even of course an ambulance match which is so over the top it wouldn't happen in any other place besides wwe um now i want to go to a little bit to talk about my rise so there are two new my rise experiences for players to enjoy we have unleash and undisputed can you tell us a little bit about that mode in general but then what players can expect from each of those i'll start with you lionel yeah. um so both you know are it to me are like they're the two two completely different modes right where in undisputed you are basically trying to become the new Roman Reigns, right? Because he has vacated his championship. It's in advance, right? And so, uh, and, and it kind of starts from there where, you know, Roman kind of lets you have it because he doesn't want Cody to finish his story, you know? So you're like, mm -hmm. all right. 
and it goes from there. And you, that roller coaster ride of like trying to, you know, hold on to that championship, trying to last as long as Roman Reigns is, you know, uh, reign. Uh, pun intended, uh, of the WWE champion, universal champion, like in, in the ups and downs of having to deal with the Miz and um, form your own, like, you know, faction. Like, it's it's so it's so fun and intense in the, the, the star power that we're bringing, not only on Undisputed, but Unleashed as well, uh, with, like, getting, like, Roman Reigns to do voiceover, Becky, like, and, you know, Woods, like, it's just so good. Like, I feel like I know I'm going to keep saying this. It's the best one we've ever done. It is right? <laughs> like, it's like seeing the bump, like, you know, like, you, you know, we have Kayla and, 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 uh, and Byron, like hosting the bump on, in our video game. Right. And you're so like, cool. It's so cool. You're like, it, it, it's those things where, you know, I look back a few years ago, we used to have to do like generic brand this and, you know, generic thing, this, and you're just like, no, now we actually have sponsors and we have like slim gyms in the game. Right. You know, so it's just like, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like we're, we're on that that precipice of you know I you know I came from uh, the NBA team like when you know we were like heading into like that pop culture territory and not just being a basketball game where you're like no we're 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 heading in a totally different direction um, and we're kind of on that same trajectory I feel like with the, with WWE 2K24 where you're like yeah we have real products in the game it's no longer like generic thing you know so um, and you know I also want to touch on uh, on Unleashed. You start off uh, as a co-owner of a uh, one of those like fictional brands, but then quickly get recruited by William Regal to join the WWE, and you start your journey from there. And you have like beef with Shotzi, and you know, and then you meet up with Alexa and like gain supernatural powers if you choose to go down that path, right? So like it, it's some of that stuff we're talking about, breathing that fun, and you said it too, that WWE thing where. You couldn't really get away with that in professional sports, but in sports entertainment, it makes complete sense. You know, mm-hmm. like I'm levitating above the of the stage. <laughs> yes, that makes sense in wrestling, right? Sting used to drop from the ceiling, you know, uh, you know, like on, on a rope. Like those are the things that I think wrestling fans will give you a pass on and and actually, you know, applaud you for doing it. Yeah, the giant sandbox. Percent. The giant sandbox of just awesomeness pro wrestling. A hundred percent. Well, speaking of sandbox, you know, uh, one of the things that we see in a lot of these sort of uh, unbelievable, but believable situations are weapons. And now I I hear you all have added new throwable weapons and interactive environment elements. And so, uh, Brian, tell us a little bit about what fans can expect and maybe, of course, what's your favorite weapon to use? (laughs) Yeah. So the return of throwables, uh, I think, you know, this was one of those things that, you know, we had during pre-production for 2K24, you know, we had tossed out the idea of bringing this back because I'm an old head. So for those who aren't aware, back in SmackDown vs. Raw 2011, we had throwable weapons. Um, it worked in the sense that you press the button and it, you know, you could throw something. The the targeting the homie wasn't all that great. So it kind of got, you know, pulled from the game, but it's back. And brother, it is fantastic. It is, it completely changes the paradigm of how one goes into a hardcore, a no disqualification, you know, a match where anything goes, right? Because not only do you have to account for, you know, your opponents that are in front of you and what they're holding in their hands, but you also have to keep your head in the swivel and watch out for things that are thrown your way when you're fighting somebody else. Uh, and any weapon that you're holding can now be thrown uh, with the exception of, I believe, the championship titles. But water bottles that are on the announce table, uh, the kendo stick, the chairs, uh, we have uh, Zelina Vega's uh, chunkla. Her slipper is a new weapon in the game. The microphone, nice. And 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 I'll and I'll just say, you know, uh, one of my favorites. I my favorite is any weapon that I can throw that you know beam somebody upside the head because the cell and the reaction that they perform just never gets old. Um, which they which goes into the backstage, you know, because again, there's the backstage environment. Of course, that's an anything goes situation. Um, and we actually expanded that this year to include multi uh, multiplayer support. Um, we've got a new elevator that you can use to take yourself from floor one to floor two and vice versa. Uh, just a lot of cool bells and whistles. And like I said, you know, vending machines and with the vending machine comes cans and bottles of water to be chucked at your opponents. Uh, it's, it's just, it's really, really fun. And, you know, the designers, uh, Derek, he did a really good job of tuning the stamina. Uh, cause you know, the backstage environments is a pretty large and there's a lot of running, a lot of dragging. And so stamina has been adjusted accordingly. So as you're playing, you won't see your characters get winded 
you know, uh, three or four minutes into the match, you know, just kind of enhance and elevate the fun factor of it. So I, it's, it's one of my favorite new improvements to the game this year, throwables. And, you know, of course, all the cool things we did with the backstage area, a uh, breakable glass. I mean, yeah, it's a sandbox of uh, violence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is what people want. And and I, I got to say, like, it's great that you brought it back as you were talking about it. It did remind me of those SmackDown uh, game days where, like, you could play in, like, Times Square, get hit by a car. So it, it's not quite yeah. as over the top as that because those moments are great. Um, but it is integral to the WWE experience. It's like, I hate you so much. I'm going to take you backstage and throw a Kendall stick in your face. Right. Like, it is awesome. So I can't wait to see uh, some of those matches with that end up little bit more violent than the other ones um but you know so lionel as we round uh round up this interview you mentioned at the top even though the tagline is finish your story you all are just getting started so now that we're launching tomorrow on xbox uh, i'm sure that you all have a great lineup down the line of dlc coming through can you talk a little bit about that yeah um like I said, I'm going to keep saying this. I think it's our best DLC ever, right? Like you know, we announced it. Everyone was like, I think this is the best one. And 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 it's hard to argue, right? Like you look at, you know, what we're starting off with, with like ECW and then, you know, getting CM Punk, right? The, the, the return of CM Punk into the game uh, and then going into like, you know, some of the 80s and then get into to the 90s with the with, or late 90s with with WC, the WCW pack and ending it strong um, with some of the current you know superstars that we're offering like Jade, you know, so it, there's so much for everyone. And then, uh, you know, I, I, I can't leave out Post Malone. Right. Like, I, I think uh, people are going to be pleasantly surprised. Not only see how good he looks in our game, like, I, you know, I, you know, there's always the question, like, who's the best looking character in the game? I saw his face scan the other day and I was like, I think that's the best one. Like, I was just like, oh, wow. my God. Like, like, I was looking at it. It was like, because it was Randy Orton. We rescanned Randy Orton this year. Um, and I was just like, oh, I think he's the best looking one now because he just there's so much detail in his face. And then I thought Post Malone, I was like, I think he's our best looking because he has the tattoos and everything. He just looks so interesting in his hair with the little mullet thing. And I was just like. I like he's probably the best looking character. And then Brian Williams also had a hand in 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 his move set and making sure that, you know, he you know, he had a specific list of what he wanted his yeah. character to how he wanted to behave in the game. And Brian Williams went to town with the, with the animators and the uh, and uh, the move set guys. Yeah, he's uh, it, it was it was fun. Uh, he provided us with some he uh, being Post Malone provided us with some videos uh, describing how he'd like his character to behave in the ring. Taunts, moves. And as he's explaining, just the enthusiasm, uh, it just came across like this. Like he is a fan, and you can I I knew that, you know, two or three minutes into him discussing how he wanted his character to be, and so I took all that information and I you know curated this move set for him, which I'm hoping he digs, because <laughs> uh, obviously if he wants any changes, we are here to oblige. Uh, but yeah, it's cool, and, and honestly, like this interview is informative for me because I was not aware of how great his models coming along. So I'm gonna nice. have to take a look at Adam after this. Uh, I'll, send, I I'll surprised... send you a link, B. I'll send you a link. Because <laughs> I mean, I know how much you know, Randy Orton. Yeah, like you said, like his face and his likeness is just. I mean, forget about it. So if you're saying that post is, is on that level, it's like, oh man, yeah, it's exciting times. And I do agree with you. I know that. Yeah, look, if it's true, it's true. This is the best DLC that we've done in a long time. I mean, between Punk. Uh, the a mix of the, of the new stars and with the old. I mean, I'm I'm excited for Punk. I'm really excited for the great Muda, uh, Jay Cargill coming down the line. Uh, it's I mean, DDP. It's 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 stacked. It really and is. We got honky tonk man. Honky tonk man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the iron Someone Sheep. for everyone. Yeah. Someone yeah. for everyone. Right? Like, I, they're, I they're, swear. They're, <laughs> getting to hear getting to hear that Post Malone's in the game, I feel like my dream matchup is now like a Texas battle between him and Undertaker. Uh, you know. Who would win, Post Malone or Undertaker? I guess we'll find out. And the only way to find out is with WWE 2K24. Lionel and Brian, thank you so much for stopping by and joining us, talking about the game. As I mentioned at the top of the uh, segment, the game is out tomorrow, March 8th. So you don't have much to wait, much time to wait. Uh, so jump in there, Lionel. Brian, thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks, Lionel and Brian. And Malik was very in his element right there. Absolutely. Um, he was the right person for the job. Mm -hmm. uh, Ethan, I know yeah. you thought 
you were here because you're the right person for the job, but <laughs> actually we invited you because we knew you were going to bring stuff. Yeah, and, uh, I get it. So I, I know, know, my, I know my role. Still makes I know the my right role. person for the job. I think it's just yeah. very important that <laughs> he, he knew the score. No, you know, no, you're fair. doing great. <laughs> like, better, I was just like, bring the controllers and you just didn't leave. I like you because you're a straight shooter. So Thank this you. is great. Yes. Yes. I, know what I'm, I take what I can get. Says no one who's ever played with me in a competitive shooter, <laughs> by the way. Um, all right, so what, what do you got here? Where do we want to start? Let's start with the. For, we got a couple controllers to show off today. Let's start with the. Uh, let's start with the one from Xbox Design Labs. You want to grab that for me, Kelly? Do not I touch I that. I <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, oh, oh my we God. have standards here on the yeah. show. It's a, okay. it's a long. These are these are first look, No Dorito dust on those. Oh, though. excellent. I, I okay. Yes. Yeah, get those on there. Get those on there before you handle this beautiful Fallout themed controller. That is just a lovely tribute to oh our, our our lovely boy Vault Boy. Would you say and it's they're special? like Kelly size too. I they're so tiny. Kind of, I would say it's very special. I would say it's extremely special. And in fact, every little character on this controller is a unique, special ability in the game. Or it's you know, if you know, if you played Fallout, you know that every ability has a Vault Boy tied to it. Be it intelligence, Ooh. strength, perception, what it's have God. you. And they're all charisma, charisma, Riz. Is. Is. Yeah, I don't know special. if the artist is yeah, special. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Yep, get those joysticks working. This? Nice. This is the pink one, I believe. Now, this comes in many different colors, um, but like we said, this was a, a design with a collage of some of the most iconic Vault Boys. Ooh. I actually have a Vault Boy shrine at my house, so I might have to cop one really? of these. I do, yeah. I love Fallout. It's one of my favorite games. And it's so, so beautiful. Yeah. Show's I, coming up soon. I am very excited. It looks so good. Oh, and the Joan Soda month. collab. Oh my yeah. god. Joan Soda again. I know. It's like a straight shot to the 90s kid, you know yeah. what I mean? Wait, uh, like Nuka Cola? I think so, right? I think they Jones like tweeted something where they uh, have. Well, I'm gonna pictures. look that up while you yeah. tell us more yeah, about this sure. controller, because you can get this controller. Right? This is not yes, this is available right now on Xbox Design Labs, and you can customize it. So maybe your favorite uh, faction is the Brotherhood of Steel, so you can get things that embody colors that embody that Ooh, faction, right? Like okay. there's like a Vault Boy one. There's a few options for you, um, a variety of button styles, but they're all kind of around the Fallout theme. Uh, obviously, iconic and blue and yellow, reminiscent of the vaults. The silver and gray, as I said, represents the Brotherhood of Steel. And uh, really any other color combination that represents your favorites, right? You could go for the railroad, go for whoever you want, you know? Go for the, whatever the you want. academy, you know, what, Do what you, have you. Do you, boo-boo. Yeah. Now, I like this combo of colors, whoever created this specific yeah. one. Yeah, I'm a sucker for pink. I didn't fan. work on this one. But. Pink, yeah. but lavender, and you got mm -hmm. that, like, flash yeah. of a little, like, teal, kind of show turquoise them, blue in Show the them metallic triggers. Give, give them some love Yeah. There. Yeah, those are nice. Yeah, let's tip that towards yeah. the camp. Oh, oh, oh look my at goodness. that. That's a good Beautiful. combo. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, so this is available. If you're a Fallout fan, don't sleep on this controller. It is gorgeous. Um, I feel my endurance getting stronger by the second. <laughs> nice. now, special. That was just saying. Can we can we name all the special uh, uh, skills? I guess so. Special's an attribute. Yes. 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 yes, attributes. That's yes. a good call out. So special. So we start with S. Strength. Right. P. Perseverance. Uh, close. <laughs> good. Close. Also so good to have. Like perception. Yes. Perce knowing per that, yes. Perception. perception. Okay. E for Ethan. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I don't actually know what E is. I, I want to say endurance. 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 That's got, yeah. that's that's 100% it. Yeah. Endurance. How do you spell special? <laughs> C. Charisma. Mm -hmm. Charisma. Uh, I. I. Intelligence. A. Agility. 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 Great. And L. Love. Linguistics. No, no, Limberness. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's all, all close. It's luck. It's luck. luck. Of course, okay. of course, yeah. Actually, yes. actually, all of those, not bad, though. Not bad. So there you have you it. You need That's, all of those things. Like, you do. You, you really do. Yeah. Yeah, every one of us has a set number like, of those I like things. love. Can we change I like, <laughs> I like, I like your suggestion. Yeah. It's by the way, most you were, February 14th. Like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, you were right, by the way. Uh, so Nuka-Cola Victory Cola is mm -hmm. the new one from Joe and Soda. Apparently, they had done a different one previously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is a... Each mango flavor. So oh, I actually love that. Maybe so rad, like rad proof clearly yeah. in the future. And that's what a very don't, don't, don't try that. But, uh, yeah. It's a very like imagine your mind orangey. peach mango, it's that yeah. color. Yeah. Okay. Because I, yes. I, I feel love like their one before it's was the, the bright color of blue. Orange. It's mm -hmm. neither peach or mango. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, that's separately, really true. Yeah. I think the Fallout show just released the first like stills, like the posters, you know, of mm -hmm. many of the main characters. They're so awesome. They're in like the Fallout art style. Go check those out. They're great phone backgrounds if you're excited for. Mm -hmm. I'm a Walton Goggins fan. I'll watch anything mm -hmm. he's in. So I'm very hyped for. I'm Fallout. sure Todd watches the show. So I'm sure um, Todd. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Uh, now we got another controller to show who off. Who wants to oh, open these? Who wants to touch? Who wants to? Wait, 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 wait. I got more gloves for you. Also, also new. 
any, you know, cheesy snacks before this. I, I like saw a... you in the green room. You were, <laughs> you're, you're eating a... I don't like the mime vibe. More Doritos, probably. <laughs> okay. So this is uh, the Victrix BFG wireless controller. What does BFG stand for, you may ask? <laughs> I think, gonna let you I think I'm one of them. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to let you... It stands for whatever you want it to stand yeah. for. I'm not going to get in trouble on this show. Um, this is pretty cool because uh, recently Designed for Xbox started releasing uh, wireless controllers. And this is one of our first ones. And so this thing is robust, right? It's going to have many Ooh. of the features you're used to on an Elite controller uh, and then it some. like a new case. Yeah, it probably yeah. does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. smell. New give case that, smell. Give that a, yeah, exactly. a wee yeah. <laughs> No, legitimately, it is emanating. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Let's get that in a, in a car scent or, so, or to hang in my car. That's yeah, what I want. Yeah, a little air freshener. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Um, you know, anyway. car scent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this thing has f uh, four programmable buttons on the back. It's got uh, Hall Effect triggers. Uh, if you if you know anything about Hall Effect, like that is the way to go when it comes to sticks and triggers. Ones? They are very nice. Is that just it's docking? <clears throat> That is, let me see this. I, I am not a hardware professional, <laughs> oh, yes. but anyone could not these tell. These are nice. Like, Ethan is here. Oh my gosh, <laughs> these are the trigger do? locks. Okay. Ooh. You don't have gloves oh. on, we have to burn that one. No! <laughs> yeah, so these will lock your triggers. Oh, no. So if you need your little hair triggers. And the cool thing about that is it's very modular too. So if you don't like where the stick is, if you want both sticks low, you can switch those out. Maybe you're into fighting games. I know it's on the front, of, is it the front of the box or the side of the box here? I think we might have a second one in there too. Oh, we've nice. got the close up here too. Yeah. yeah. You open that for me, it might be on there. But the, you can swap it out for the six button Wait, cover for fighting games. So you games. could like put these closer together? Yes. Like you could. Yeah, sort of exactly. Oh. Those those all kind of pop out, fully modular, which is nice. So you know, set it up how you want it to be, um, and based on the games, like multiple joysticks to choose from, multiple D pads to choose from. This thing is is really just a nice piece of hardware. It's really going to fulfill or or hit any of those oh. kind of needs you have as a gamer. Oh yeah, there's oh so you can put in essentially like a. A six-button controller. Right. Oh, that's oh, amazing. A little fight stick. Yeah. 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 Uh, I prefer to play fighting games with a controller mm -hmm. as opposed to a fight then stick. You love it. But then you only have the four buttons. So usually, mm -hmm. if I'm playing Street Fighter, I take the medium attack and yeah. I put it on the triggers. I use those less than heavy and light. So. Now that brings me back to the Sega Genesis six button controller days. No. Those, were, yeah. those were oh, good yeah. times. And I'm like, like, yeah. for, for those fighting game like fans or like anyone that's trying to get competitive with this thing, obviously it's wireless. It's also Bluetooth, so you can play it with your mobile on the go. You can play it on your PC, but it does come with a, a, a cable as well if you're trying to plug in because you don't want any latency. You're trying to sweat it out in a tournament setting, you know, if you're at your local fighting tournament or what have yeah. you. Did you um, lock those triggers? We're just through. having fun with it now. Yeah. Sorry. It's, now, it's very, yeah. Where's the where's like now the we're mic? just like smelling them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. clicking the buttons. It's the ASMR. It does have that new controller smell. smell. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, multiple. It's got the tool for tightening in yeah. there as well. Like it, it is. This is if you're if you're you looking to kind of ball yeah. out with your with your controller. This is a nice piece of hardware. This is well, the most innovative too. thing I've ever seen. Vitrix makes some really cool beautiful. stuff. Like their headsets yeah. are awesome. Um, they're just a really nice brand. Yeah, big shout out to Vitrix and, and everyone on the Xbox and the Vitrix side that worked on this device. It is rad. It's a shame they only yeah. sent one of them over here. Well, there's two. There's two. <laughs> you're, you're not really following along here, Ethan. Uh, uh, <laughs> Got to raise that eye stat. It's a shame this we never saw really any else. of them at all. On <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's. It's the odd man out here. Lost in shipping. Yeah, but these right. things are great. Well, <laughs> well, we figured out exactly what we're probably not going to be able to to take home. Let's talk about what you're going to be able to take home because it is Free Code Friday time. You know how it works. All you got to do is head on over to twitter.com slash Xbox Wire tomorrow. That is Friday at noon Pacific. And uh, you just have to, between noon and two on March 8th, answer this question and we will randomly select five folks uh, and they will actually get a copy of WWE 2K24. It is random, but the question you've got to answer is this one. What would be your pro wrestling entrance song? Who would want to go first? Love is a Battlefield, Pat Benatar. Wow. <laughs> How does that one start? Is that a strong start? Uh, like, it's, it's almost a slower, it's a slower build. You yeah. know, you can kind of come out like, oh, I'm, I, can't, I, I don't want to get a, I can't hum it, right? See, you need the one where if like The Rock is monologuing and yeah. then they hear the first like note, like everyone goes, oh. oh and then you run in with a chair. You're yeah. telling me everybody doesn't know Love is a Battlefield by Pat Benatar in the first note. I don't know. I mean, may, maybe Barracuda might be more of a <laughs> yeah, okay, Pat Benatar enough. banger. No, that's hard. That's hard. Barracuda's yeah. hard, man. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you would know it. Like, you could, you could come in on the true. chorus. That's true. That's yeah. true. Just it could screaming be the, at the top uh, of my lungs. The, the Ethan remix. Yeah. 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 Kelly, do you have, exactly. do you have an entrance song? You've had yeah. all five seconds to think about it? Yeah. 
I had one, but I'm changing it. Okay. Aww. And it's going to be Taylor Swift, Look What You Made Me Do. Okay. Ooh. All right. Would it be yeah. a certain part? Would it be like the, oh, she's dead? Or like, where do, where do you come in? It, that would be a really good one. That like, would be why? powerful. Because yeah. she's dead. And then it's like, ooh. And then I like shut down. But even like the beginning is really good yeah. where it's just like the like slow kind of like do, do, do. And so... Yeah, you could do some really cool stuff with the lights in the in the stadium. Yeah, like yeah. Some I wonder smoke, how much you two have outfit. watched wrestling yeah. because you got to come in with that. You got to go right yeah. in strong. It's true. Yeah. It's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm wearing like a black snake leotard because it's reputation. <laughs> Kelly's Extra version credit here, by the way. Yeah, yeah for yeah. real. Even I put more thought into production. the outfit yeah. than um, I want, I want the actual song. I want to know yours if you're throwing so much shade on yeah. ours. Oh, I don't yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So much uh, let me look through my, <laughs> my Spotify playlist. Uh, song actually I have in my head right now, which I think would be really good mm. uh, for this, is Easy by La Seraphim. Okay. Like, I've had this song in my head, mm. like, all freaking week. Um, um, I don't know that one. See? Yeah. All right. So, you Charles, if you haven't heard it. I don't know if that's what really represents me the most, but it has, like, a really great beat. So, it just comes right on in. So we'll go with that one. Okay, nice. I just see the energy coming in. Honestly, I'd have to like deep dive into my Spotify to yeah. truly pick one because you sprung this on us. But <laughs> um, be going with my horror theme because it, it was honestly between the joke of like something Celine Dion and like, <laughs> well, we've been talking about horror games. So let me go in that direction. If you guys have seen 28 Days Later, like the yes. original. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh so I know where you're going. The like this. soundtrack song. I think it's called In the House in a Heartbeat or something like that. It's cool. And it is like, just incredibly intense. The one and where it really so, builds like yes, towards the end. Exactly. You have great taste. So too. I think thank you. I think it might come up like right towards the end of that build yes. because you do need that intensity for you WWE. You do. Okay. Like, that's it. That that I appreciate the thought that went into that. That's that's in a the really house in a heartbeat. In yes. the house in a heartbeat. Yeah, you should look that up. It's a fantastic soundtrack. It's a great soundtrack. song. I was yeah. obsessed with it. What, right. a, what a film. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm gonna have to go back too. and exactly. watch and watch that. Anyway, what we think doesn't matter, what you think does matter. So again, on Friday. March 8th at noon, between noon and two, answer that question. What will be your pro wrestling entrance song? That is a reply to the tweet you will see on twitter.com slash Xbox Wire. And we will select five winners to win WWE 2K24. Mm. Kelly, Ethan, thanks so much for joining us. Any any final parting thoughts here? Ooh. Use, thoughts? The, use that I or that the C. Use your What's charisma. What's a thought? Yes. Oh, oh, use the C? Yes. Play yeah. Sea of Thieves um, on Xbox Game Pass. <laughs> that was the I. Use your intelligence on that <laughs> nice. one. Good plug. Good plug. Yeah. Good yes. plug. Yeah. I like it. Uh, everybody love one another. Call your mom for uh, Women's History Month. You know, you said that earlier. That's a great reminder. Yeah. I stole yours, but yeah. I'm co-opting Or it. don't, that's if you don't own. want to, no pressure. Yeah. That's a good call. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank oh, you for course. having us. Anytime. Maybe we'll have them back. I think, oh, okay. I think, they, I think they, they passed the audition. They yeah, they really did. Thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, Tina, any last thoughts? Um, just let me know what you think about Partner Preview. Mm. We're really excited to put that together and, and really excited that people were excited that we, we did another one so quickly after last October. Yeah. So hoping to do more of those. All right. And I would just say, if you're watching this when it first comes out, please watch the Towerborn stream at 2 p.m. Pacific Ooh. and yes. uh, the Capcom stream at 3 p.m. Pacific. A yeah. lot of stuff to keep you busy today. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for spending some time with us and uh, we'll see you next week.